here we're going to be looking at the conventional retail inventory method versus the cost method. And for example here we're going to have a retail store here that will be selling a merchandise here to their customers. So what we have to first do is we have a cost here on these inventories that we're selling here. That's what this store paid for this uh, merchandise here. And then they're going to have established a retail price here. That's what they are uh, pricing it out or selling it to their customer. And what we're going to be looking at here is the conventional inventory method here versus the cost method. And what we mean by this is we're going to have to determine our ending inventory here at cost using these two different methods here. And we're going to first we have to determine our ending inventory here at the retail. And that's going to include determining whether we've got some markups here in our inventory prices or some markdowns in our inventory prices. So we're going to be going through this example here. So first for example here we had some beginning inventories and then we had some purchases here for the period and just look at the, uh, pri at the uh, retail price that we're going to be using here. So we have merchandise available here for sale of $72,000. Now we're going to have uh, had some markups. We're going to have some markups in price of 6000 and then we're going to have some cancellations of those markups here for 2000 So our net markups are going to be for $4,000 here. Now, uh, we would, uh, so we come up with a, total, a subtotal amount here and we're just doing this because we're going to have to divide it out here between this conventional method here and this cost method on what we're charging here on our, what we have here in our retail pricing. So our merchandise available for sale was 72000 at our mar net markups of 4000 gives us a subtotal here of $76,000. Now we have to consider our markdowns here. So we have a markdowns here in our price of 5000 less markdown cancellation of 4000 so we get net markdowns here of $1,000. So again, coming up with a subtotal here, we would subtract these net markdowns here from our subtotal amount here of $76,000, which included our uh, merchandise available here plus our markups, our net markups here. Uh, so we got the $76,000 here uh, minus this $1,000 in a net markdown, so we got a subtotal amount here of $75,000. Now, to determining an ending inventory. Well, we would just deduct our sales. Let's say, say we had $50,000 worth of sales here for the period. So subtracting that from our subtotal here of $75,000, we're getting ending inventory here at retail at $25,000. So now let's first go and we're going to be looking at our conventional uh, uh, method here to, for our retail inventory. So let's go up and look at our definitions on that here. So the conventional retail inventory method, that's the lower of cost or market approach. That's where you compute the cost ratio after the markups and the markup cancellations but before the markdowns. And we do that here in it, it to approximate the lower market of cost lower of cost or market, excuse me, to consider our markdowns as current losses here and not included in calculating the cost to retail ratio. So omitting the markdowns makes the cost to retail ratio here lower, which leads to the lower cost of market. That's just our definition here. So let's go look at our example here. Uh, our conventional inventory method, and this is where we included our markups here in our ratio of cost, our ratio of the cost to retail here, but we didn't include any markdowns. So what was our cost here? Well, was our totals here was 41000 here, and our that was our cost here on that merchandise. And then our retail price here was 76000 So taking the 41000 here divided by the 76000 we're going to come up with a ratio of our cost to retail here of 53.9%. Now, this is what we'd be doing here to determine our end, ending inventory. So maybe, well, let's go down and look at that here. So again, to approximate the lower cost of market, you must establish this cost to retail ratio here. Now that's what we did above here. And again, this is for the conventional retail method. So going through here to determine our uh, ending inventory here. So what we would do here on our cost to retail ratio here, just to uh, go through that again here, we had our cost of goods available here. And then we would divide that here by the original retail price of the goods available plus the net markups. This is our definition here. So our cost to retail ratio, just to go through that again here, was $41,000 here for a cost. Divide that here by our, uh, per, our, mer, our per, uh, retail cost. Uh, price here of $76,000 for our goods gives us that 53.9% here of our cost to retail ratio. So our ending inventory at the lower cost or market, that was uh, 
now this is at our cost here that would be the 53.9 percent here that was cost to retail ratio times that $25,000 that ending inventory that we calculated and that was the retail ending inventory here in our ending inventory at cost or in this case it's a lower cost of market because it's this conventional retail method here would be uh, taking this 53.9 percent times our $25,000 here retail ending inventory gives us 13 $15,475. dollars So that would be our ending inventory here at cost. Now let's go back up to our example here and okay we figured out our conventional method here for evaluating our ending inventory at cost. Now let's go down and this is how we complete for our cost method here. So this is where we would uh, take our this is where we include our uh, both the markups and our markdowns here in our uh, Evalu evaluation here for our ratio of our cost to retail price here. So our markdowns, uh, well our total amounts here after our markups and our markdowns we had, our, again our cost here was $41,000 here and then we would divide that here by the uh, retail price here that we have of $75,000 which included both our markups and our markdowns. So the division here gives us 54.7%. Now this is for the cost method here. So now let's go and look at this uh, cost method here again just to review that. So the cost retail method here that yields the approximate cost. Now that computes the cost ratio after both the markups and the markdowns and the cancellations here are considered. And we had done that here. So determining our uh, ending inventory at cost now this is the cost method. We take this cost to retail ratio that was the $41,000 here we had cost and then we divide it here by the $75,000 here our retail amount here on our, on our retail amount here and that gives us 54.7 percent. Now that's our cost to retail ratio here. So uh, 54 taking our ending inventory cost we would just determine that here by taking this cost to retail ratio of 54.7 percent times our ending inventory here the retail value at 25,000 gives us an ending inventory here at cost at $13,675. So let's just go up here and look at our example again here. So remember we had to determine our beginning our merchandise available for sale and then for we had to also determine our markups and our markup cancellations here and based on that then we determine our ratio of our cost to retail here that was the conventional inventory method here and using this ratio of our cost to retail here of 53.9 percent that was the 41,000 divided by the 76,000 dollars we had taken this ratio of our cost to retail of 53.9 percent times our ending inventory here at $25,000 and we determined our ending inventory here at cost and remember that we have determined here was uh, to be $13,475. Now we've taken then for our cost method we've taken here our ratio of our cost to our retail that was done after it included both the markups and our markdowns here so we had this amount here $41,000 here divided by 75 that was 41,000 the cost divided by $75,000 here the retail amount here and we come up with 54.7 percent so we had taken this 54.7 percent here uh, times the $25,000 here in our ending inventory and we come up with our ending inventory here here at cost and that happened to be $13,675. So you can just see here uh, the comparison between this conventional method here and the cost method. Just remember here when you're calculating your ratio of the cost here on your inventory for the conventional method you only include your markups and your markup cancellations here and then when you're doing your cost method here uh, determine this ratio of cost to retail. Remember it includes both the markups and also the markdowns. So it's done after that here. So this is just a comparison here between these two methods. I didn't go through all the numbers, but you'll get the idea here if you just go and look at it and do your calculations or follow through this video.